discuss mixtures uh, ensure that you've covered the topics of ratios percentages and weighted averages before you look at it uh, we will mostly use the scale method either in the form of the diagram or uh, the formula that we use w1 by w2 is equal to c2 minus c average upon c average minus c1 so let's jump in mixtures is a direct application of weighted averages so we will often use this formula that we have discussed in weighted averages or we could also use the scale in mixture questions. So uh, if you recall, this is C1, C2, and then uh, somewhere we'll have the C average. And if the weight given to C1 is W1 and the weight given to C2 is W2, then this length will be divided in the ratio W2 is to W1. That is the inverse of the ratio of the weights. So we'll use either this formula or the scale in, uh, in the mixture questions. And what are we asked to average? Often the concentration of a component in a solution. So for example, we'll be given that we have a solution with let's say 10% alcohol and another solution with 20% alcohol, and then we mix them together. So what is the concentration of the solution of the you know, mixture that we get? So these are the kind of questions we get. Now, how do we calculate concentration of a component? That is amount of component upon amount of the total solution. Uh, here, amount of the solution basically means the volume of the solution because we're talking about liquids. So this is the same as volume. So what will be our weight? Our weight will be the solution, the volume of the solution. Now, all these things will become clear once we take an example. We are given four gallons of 10% alcohol solution is mixed with six gallons of 20% alcohol solution. All right. So say we have 10% alcohol solution and we have 20% alcohol solution. Alcohol solution. This is four gallons and this is six gallons. So what happens when we mix them together? First of all, I can say that we get 10 gallons of total solution because 4 gallons is mixed with 6 gallons. And there is a certain concentration of alcohol over here, which I don't know, and I'll call it C average. So how do we get C average? All right, let's draw a scale over here. I say C1 is equal to 10%, and I say C2 is equal to 20%. How much the W1, how much is C1? That is four gallons. The W2 is six gallons because this is the amount of the solutions that are mixed, right? And our weight is going to be the amount of the solution. All right, so then my C average uh, will be, no, not here. My C average will be somewhere over here. And why is that? Because the ratio of the weights is 2 is to 3. So the distance between C1 and C2 will be split in the ratio what? 3 is to 2. The reverse of the ratio of the weights. Right? Then, since this is 10% and this is 20%, there is a distance of 10 in between them. And if we split this difference of 10 in the ratio 3 is to 2, what are we going to get? We'll get 6 and 4. That means six, our C average is 6 more than 10%, which means our C average is 16%. Or it's another way of saying that our C average is 4 less than 20%, which means our C average is 16%. In the previous question, we used the scale. That is, we drew the scale and then found out our answer. Why? Because C average was not given to us. So it's a little trickier to use the formula because then we have to cross multiply and then the calculations become a little cumbersome. But then uh, in case we do have C average, then using the formula will be the best bet. Yeah. Let's look at this example to find it out. All right, so solution A is 10% alcohol and solution B is 35% alcohol. So let's make that small diagram that we did last time as well. So we say this is 10% alcohol, which means 90% water. 
and here we have 35% alcohol which means 65% water right and we mix them together and we get a resultant which is a 15 gallon mix so what can we say first of all that the volume of this one and the volume of this one together is 15 gallons right that is why the overall volume of the mixture is 15 gallons and what is the concentration over here it is given to be 30 percent so this is a 30 percent alcohol solution so then we have c1 is 10 percent c2 is 35 percent and c average is 30 percent let's use our formula now we say w1 upon w2 is c2 which is 35 minus c average which is 30 upon c average which is 30 minus c1 which is 10 so we get 5 by 20 or 1 by 4 so then the weights of the two that is the volumes of the two will be in the ratio 1 is to 4 and in ratio terms this total is 5 gallons it is given to us that this is actually equal to 15 gallons. The total is actually equal to 15 gallons. This means that our multiplier is 3 over here, which means that I'll multiply each of these with 3 as well. And what do I get? I get that the 10% alcohol solution was 3 gallons and the 35% alcohol solution was 12 gallons. What is the question? Approximately how many, how many gallons of uh, solution A were used? We know it is 3 gallons. So we can use either the formula or the scale, whichever is convenient. The formula is pretty convenient when we have C1, C2 and C average given to us. In case we do not have C average, then, the scale, then drawing the scale might be a better option. Let's look at another example. We have two containers of melted silver aluminium alloys. Container 1 has 2 parts silver to 3 parts aluminium and container 2 has 6 parts silver to 5 parts aluminium. Both of them are mixed together to give 16 gallons. All right, so let's draw that small diagram that we have been making. So container 1 has 2 parts silver to 3 parts aluminium and container 2 has six parts silver to five parts aluminium. We don't know how many gallons they have, right? They are both mixed together to give 16 gallons of an alloy. So the total is 16 gallons. The total volume is 16 gallons, all right, containing equal amounts of silver and aluminium. That means for one part of silver, we have one part of aluminium. They are equal, so 50-50, fine. How many gallons of alloyed container A have? Okay, now people get confused in this question, even though it is not different from our previous questions at all. Previously, we said that we have a 10% alcohol solution. What does that mean? It means that for 10 parts of alcohol, we have 90 parts of water. If we have a 20% alcohol solution, what does that mean? For 20% of alcohol, we have 80 water for 20 parts of alcohol we have 80 parts of water so here they have just given us the parts separately that's all they both add up to 100 here both the solutions added up to 100 so we didn't have to worry about the total but here they add up to different quantities so we'll see how to do the calculation we don't have to worry about that but essentially both the questions are exactly the same here also these solutions were a mix of two components, alcohol and water. And here also these solutions are a mix of two components, uh, silver and aluminium, right? So then we say the concentration of silver in the first solution is 2 by 5. Note that it is not 2 by 3. The concentration of silver will be the amount of silver upon amount of the total solution which is going to be 5 2 plus 3 equal to 5 so this is the concentration of silver in the first solution and the concentration of silver in the second solution is 6 upon 11 again 
this is the amount of silver 6 divided by the total which is 11 concentration will always be the amount of the component divided by the total right so that is why we'll have 11 over here <clears throat> now c average is given to be half why because we know that silver is to uh, aluminum is 1 is to 1 in the uh, mixture uh, when we uh, mix the two solutions together all right so uh, you know, here now calculations are going to be a little difficult because we have all these different denominators. So let's make them the same to ease our calculations. So we can multiply this by 22, both of them. By 22, by 22, what do we get? We get 44 upon 110. C1 becomes 44 upon 110. This we multiply over here by 10. Why are we doing that? Because the LCM of 5, of 11, and of 2 is 110, right? So then we want to make the denominator 110 in each case, in each one of these fractions. So we multiply this by 110 as well. We get 60 upon 110. And then we'll multiply here and divide both by 55. So we get 55 upon 110. Now, the denominators in all of these are the same. So, now we can use our formula W1 upon W2 is equal to C2 minus C average. We don't need to consider the denominators now because they'll anyway get cancelled, right? So, we might as well just work with the uh, numerators. So, we get 60 minus C average, which is 55 upon C average, which is 55 minus C1, which is 44. So we get 5 upon 11. Now we get that the ratio of the two volumes, of the two solutions that were mixed together were 5 is to 11. We also know that in ratio terms, this adds up to 16. And we know that the weight of the total solution is 16 gallons. So this means that our multiplier is 1. That means solution 1 was 5 gallons and solution 2 was 11 gallons. This is what we are asked. How many gallons of alloy did container A have? So it had 5 gallons of the alloy. So this last example often confuses people while they are fairly comfortable with the previous one. Though, you know, both of them give very, very similar data. Recall what we discussed in our percentages module that ratio and percentages are interchangeable concepts. Yeah, they both give us relation between two quantities without giving us the actual value. Let me share a portion of my screen to show you.